me and my goddamn cousin, Bloody Red, nigga. Uh, yo, line them up, nigga. Yeah, this ain't all, this ain't no bullshit, now. Nah. Yeah, we ain't got no V6s. You see that? Hear me? Yo. Hear me? Y'all yeah, know what the fuck going on. Y'all hear that bitch growling? Woo. How about this a red charger with black wheels, tinted windows, is pulled right in front of us. Talking about talking about Y'all can see that motherfucker. But look. Compare it. I don't know. I'm not saying this is that or that is this. But y'all compare it. And they making it a point to keep up with us this whole way. They making it a point. Alexis Ware went missing in Anderson, South Carolina. A lot of people will kind of uh, steer you away from the fact that Alexis Ware had a lot of stuff going on before she before she went missing. I find it real funny that the family, the friends, the loved ones, everybody kind of went on without Alexis Ware. I mean, I understand life goes on, but we're not just talking about over time. Everybody instantly forgot about Alexis Ware. Everybody instantly forgot about Alexis Ware. They even forgot about her so much to, as soon as the news broke that Alexis Ware was missing, they didn't even tell the news the correct story. They hid the fact that Alexis Ware was getting abused. They hid the fact that Alexis Ware was scared for her life. They dismissed the fact that Alexis Ware hit a big lick sometime before she went missing. They cut off the fact that Alexis Ware and TJ were having all types of trouble in paradise. They forgot about the key players, Madison, Alizé, uh, Antonio, uh, you know, the mother gave about five different versions of the story of how it happened. And none of them were correct. They forgot about the fact that Alexis Ware, like I said, 
she hit a lick sometime before she went missing and uh somebody wanted some get back on Alexis Ware. Somebody wanted some get back and TJ and all the people around Alexis Ware knew for a fact that Alexis Ware had this coming. That's why everybody was so nonchalant. Go back to those news conferences when it first started. Go look at everyone's eyes. No one was scared for Alexis Ware. No one was really worried about her. They all knew that not only did Alexis Ware was no longer here, they knew it happened a long time before they even told us anything. This was planned out. None of the details match up. The 7-Eleven footage never surfaced. The police don't believe the family members when they say what they said. The reason why TJ is no longer a person of interest and this is not a murder case is because they don't know anything. Everyone told a different account of what happened, but all the stories kind of aligned. And it just it was so weird that the cops were just like, bro, we don't know what's going on, but... If we ever figure something out, we'll let you know. Job well done, South Carolina. Oh, I got to say job well done. Because y'all completely covered up a murder scene. Y'all completely covered up a murder case. And I warned everyone we would come to this day. Nobody's talking about Alexis Ware no more. Alexis Ware is a distant memory. Look at Alize. You don't see her talking about Alexis Ware. Look at uh look at Madison. You don't hear her talking about Alexis Ware. You don't hear none of the family and friends screaming out justice for Alexis Ware. There are no search parties. There are no boots on the ground. Yeah, someone may share a post here and there. But there is no action. There's nothing actively going on in the Alexis Ware case. The Alexis Ware case is over. Did y'all forget about the girl that TJ went to her house with the bat in Alexis Ware's car? Did you forget about TJ had two of the same cars because his cousin drove the same one he had? Did y'all forget about Bruce and his love for young women? Did y'all forget about the bald-headed man that was at the restaurant that Alexis Ware was last seen at? But they covered that up. The mom didn't even want that information out there. There was a restaurant Alexis Ware visited right before she went missing. But they want to pretend like all this. Well, I don't know if Alexis Ware was there. Let me just say allegedly because allegedly Alexis Ware was missing before. And someone else probably possibly had her phone and was just running all kind of plays. I mean, we all know the mom has been in the phone recently. We all know the Facebook, the Instagram, everything just so happens to just go green every now and then. And they want you to believe that there's some hope that Alexis Ware is out there somewhere. While they continuously move on with their life and while they've moved so far away from even getting caught up in a Rico. Because this is all about drug money. Let me tell y'all something. This all boils down to drug money and a lot of key players in the drug game. Tim Boss. You know, he moved some shit for Young Dolph. You know, Young Dolph was in the streets, right? Alexis Ware was also connected to Snooty Wild. Snooty Wild was tapped in with Houston. Houston is tied in with the Prince family. The Prince family knew about the Mo3 hit. All of this stuff is connected, and I've been trying to tell y'all for quite some time. Everything is connected, and it'll all make sense in the end. I hope y'all are really paying attention to what I'm telling y'all in this video. Because when we revisit this... It's going to make sense. But I've just been sitting back thinking, man, and everyone that that was involved, look at look at uh, the aunt. You remember her aunt used to always pop on my platform. 
and always be acting like she was looking for a man. That aunt is now trying to be a YouTuber. That aunt don't give a damn about Alexis Ware. Matter of fact, she don't care about Alexis Ware so much. Not one video on her YouTube channel even has Alexis Ware's name in it. And the mom ain't been on her YouTube channel to even say she's looking for Alexis Ware. The family ain't been on her YouTube channel. No, she much rather beef with YouTubers and bloggers and be involved in all types of foolishness on the YouTube streets versus getting in the real streets and getting some justice for Alexis Ware. All you people are going to be held accountable. And karma is very real. And it's a dish that's best served cold. And like a lot of people who have done things to Ratchet TV, you're going to get your karma in the end. And for y'all who did what you did to Alexis Ware, karma is coming. By the end of this year, by the last day of the month of this year, y'all going to see. Ratchet TV was right about everything he said. And someone... In this case, we'll either get knocked off or they'll be in jail by the end of this year. May or may not have nothing to do with Alexis Ware, but karma is real. There's a gang called the Omerta Boys who know how to get away with a lot of stuff. There's Voodoo Magic and all these players, every one of them, Madison and her people, Alizé and her people, Alexis Ware, her family, TJ, his family, they're all tied into voodoo and black magic. And I told y'all when this case first started, this was about black magic and some street shit. Well, did I lie? <laughs> did I lie to y'all? This is about black magic mixed with a whole lot of street shit. A case that'll probably never get solved. Job well done, Omerta boys. Y'all disposed of what y'all disposed of. We know about Belton Woods, and we know who lives in Belton Woods. We know why her car was over there. That's the drug drop-off spot. She was going to drop off a package, and the Omerta boys snatched her up, allegedly. And the rest is history. Yeah, we know what y'all did, bro. And it's only a matter of time. Time is ticking. So to the Omerta boys, to TJ, Madison, Alizé, the mom, the aunt, the family, the friends, I got one final thing to say to y'all before we revisit this. Karma is coming. Bitch, you from Greenville. Nope. Stop that line. Hey. Why her throat, nigga, bitch? What? Why her throat? Bitch, you from Greenville. Stop that line. Jules, I get it. 16 to 18, motherfucker, it's going down. You say, yes, sir. Bitch, we out here.